Hey, welcome back once again to the Tech of Tomorrow YouTube channel, bringing you tomorrow's technology today. Now, what are we gonna be looking at today? You guys all know Ivy Bridge right around the corner, very soon indeed. Today, we're gonna be looking at the MSI Z77A-GD55. Now, this is one of the introductory level Ivy Bridge motherboards that's coming out. This motherboard has a lot of new features, including their military class three hardware, which is basically a terminology they created for using really good hardware in the motherboard itself. So that said, let's jump in and let's check out some of the features and what comes in this box of the new MSI Z77A-GD55 motherboard. <laughs> Okay, like all good unboxings, we'll take a look at the outside of the box first. Now, I don't know if you guys really notice a theme, but everything seems to be three this generation. It's, you know, we got the new PCI 3, PCI Gen 3, Military Class 3, or to say to 3, USB 3, everything is on the threes. So you guys see on the front of the box, supports the new 22 nanometer Ivy Bridge processors. This is their one second overclocking, their overclocking Gini. We'll take a look at that, the motherboard. They got their click BIOS too. This is just basically UEF BIOS you can click through. Let's turn around, let's take a look at the back of the box. Back of the box shows more of their features. Their Dr. Moss 2, solid ferrite choke, high C cap and solid cap, all high end Japanese components. Once again, we have the overclock and one second booster overall system performance. This is the OC Genie 2. It's basically just click a little button, away you go. They have over here their supercharger. This is for plugging in all your stuff from USB. It'll charge it all up. They have this Winky 3 right here. What basically the Winky 3 is, is it is their own version of Linux software that works through their stuff. It actually works with their board developed from them. Kind of crazy. TXX True Studio Pro Audio. This is provided by the Realtek chipset. They actually show you the rear I.O. here. They talk about Gen 3 PCI stuff. You guys all know that's all going to be anything when Ivy Bridge gets there. So without any further ado, though, let's take a look at what comes inside the box. So I'll pop the cap first. So as we pop the cap in the box, we'll start off showing you guys all the stuff that comes in the box. I'm going to set it out here one by one. So starting off, we'll see right here we have the user's guide. That's the first thing that comes in the box. Then we have their software application guide. Shows all their stuff once again on there. Here's their certificate of quality and stability. This is basically saying that their board is what it says it is. We've got the driver's manual. It's a beta you can see. Two SATA cables. Set those down. One SLI bridge. Here's a giant unfolding thing. I'm not gonna unfold it all. But this is basically an instruction guide, quick installation guide. If you've never actually had a PC before, this is your first build, this could come in handy. It gives you steps on in installing your CPU, your memory, even installing it into the case. So it's pretty much a pretty good user's guide right there. Here are our quick connect. These are for our front panel connectors. Here's the rear I.O. The rear I.O. on those is clearly labeled. Everything says what it is. Clear CMOS, HDMI, everything is well explained on this. So if you go in there to plug your cables in, you won't have to go, oh, where do I plug it in? It tells you very clearly on this rear I.O. where to plug it in at. Go ahead and set that down. Now here is something actually interesting. A premium release MSI Intel Z77 blah, blah, blah platforms overclocking guide. So inside of here, they give you a bunch of different things on overclocking. Here's, I'm just trying to get this thing out here so you guys can see, I'll kind of get it back. So we got that, the BIOS overclocking options. Then once finally in the CPU core speed overclocking and memory speed overclocking. So. This is basically all the content, all the camera just shoot back down to the table real quick so you guys can see it. Now we'll get this out of the way and let's take a look at the heart of the matter, the motherboard. Okay, so now that we have the motherboard, we'll go ahead and remove it from its anti-static bag. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and just set it down the table. So let's start at the top of the board. We see right here, they have their OC Genie 2, their military class three hardware. This is their cooling solution. It's covering all the MOSFETs and everything else. As far as the CPU fans go, here on the very top of the board, we see one right here. We see another one here. This is the OC Genie button right here. Then you have your power and your restart buttons right here. These are all great when you're testing on a test bench. I'm gonna go ahead and take this little sticker off here. Move over the zip socket. Here's our memory. This takes dual channel DDR3. It'll take up to 32 gigabytes. I'm gonna flip back on the board. Let's talk a little bit about the power connections. Here's our first being right here. This is the eight pin power connector located to the left of the ZIF socket. 
We have the 24 pin power. We have another fan header right here. And then right here on the board, this is where you can check all of your voltage. I want the camera to get right in close up there. This is where you can just hook a voltage connector right here to this and read your motherboard. Great for overclocking or just testing the board and regulating it. Pretty cool stuff. Flip the board back around again. We have a giant sticker covering all the stuff on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this sticker now and just take it and set it off to the side somewhere as we start working our way down the PCI slots. So the top, we have one PCIe times one. There's two more of those, three more of those. So we have one, two, three, four PCIe 1X slots. Now these slots will either run 16, 16, eight, or they'll run eight, eight, and four, depending on how you set them up on the motherboard. You see again, we have the THX audio right here provided by the Realtek chipset. I'm gonna move back over across the board. Here we see another little MSI thing. This is doing additional cooling. And then let's pop back up here and let's go take a look by the ZIF socket. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just remove all this stuff. You guys can see we actually have another fan header here, which is very close to the ZIF socket. Now, this ZIF socket will take all of the previous generation Sandy Bridge processors, and all the new Ivy Bridge processors, which are based off the 20 nanometer process. I'm gonna flip back down again, take a look down the side of the board. We see right here, our USB 3.0 connector. And now we're gonna to get to a part of the board where I feel the board is kind of lagging. Now this board says that it has both Intel and ASMedia controllers on board, but let me get this sticker on here. They put stickers all over everything on this board. I, I actually find it kind of annoying because they gotta sit there and rub all the plastic stuff off. So let's check this out though. There are three SATA connections. SATA 1 and 2, these are based off the SATA 3. The other two right here are based off SATA 2. And there was another SATA 6 gigabit connection that was supposed to be right here. I believe this would have been with the Asmedia controller, but they've left it off the board. You guys can see there clearly the chip is completely missing. I'm gonna flip down, go to the bottom of the board. We have one, two additional USB. Then we have the IEEE. Has some additional ports over here, including one more system fan over here and our final audio connections. Last but not least, let's take a look at the rear I.O. Right here, we have legacy PS2 and mouse combo port. Below that, two USB 2.0 ports. Here's the reset CMOS. I'm gonna try to get this up by the camera so you guys see this closer. A little button right here. You guys can see that. In fact, let's keep the board up here. Here right here is optical and a spit of out. Now up here on top, we can see we have two more USB 2.0 connectors. And then below that we have an HDMI connector. Now this board has no display port at all. I find that disappointing because I use display port monitors, but to some of you that won't matter at all. Here, right here, we see additional USB ports. These are the 3.0 variety. We see the RJ45 LAN. I was reading the manual and it said this thing support a lot of technology for shotgun, you know, LAN, and that's just not available here on the board. So I don't know what that's about, but here we see DVI, standard VGA, and then finally your analog connections. All right, folks, so that's it. This was the unboxing and first features review of the new MSI Z77A-GD55. Look for more reviews next week.